Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the Farm Vlog today. Got a little bit more work to do on the Cummins Dodge here. We've got a 2000 Dodge Ram 2500 Cummins diesel that I had a carrier bearing or the center support bearing that holds the drive shaft up. I thought it had gone bad. Well, it turns out it had gone bad and the rubber bushing around it was really bad and was causing some vibration. Well, that vibration was actually being caused by a U-joint and I knew I needed to do it, but I didn't do it. When I had the drive shaft out, I should have replaced all the U-joints in it. I didn't do that, so now we're forced to go ahead and take the drive shaft back off and we're gonna pop out those U-joints and put new U-joints in. The ones that we're gonna put in are different than the ones that are there. We have a sealed bearing U-joint now and we have new U-joints that are greasable. So hopefully they'll last another 20 years. It's a good truck. So come on along today. I'm not gonna show you pulling this drive shaft. I might show you the two bolts that I have to pull off and just pull it on out and then we'll show you how we replace the U-joints. Pretty cool. Thanks a lot and we'll see you in just a second working on this truck. Okay, so I lied. We will take you under the truck and I'll just show you what we have to unbolt. Pretty simple, pretty quick, easy procedure. And I'll show you. Let me get up under here real quick. So I'm up under this Dodge Ram Cummins diesel and it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. This yoke slides right out from the transmission. Pretty simple. And as we slide down a little bit, we have four bolts. Let me get you up underneath here. We have four bolts right up here. This is the carrier bearing that I just replaced and we have four bolts that hold this into position. We'll remove those four bolts and then there are two bolts in the back or actually four bolts in the back I'll show you. So the last four bolts that we have to remove are right here and basically these hold the rear U-joint to the rear end. We'll just unclamp these two clamps. There's a clamp here and a clamp right there. Now the cool thing is I had all these tools already laid out so it's going to be really simple to replace all this stuff. I'll just pop it loose and I think we're going to take it to my buddy's shop and use a press. So there are two or three different ways to do this. These have retaining clips on the outside of them and I'll just go into more detail with that in just a minute. We can put them in a vise and knock them out or we can take them to a press and press them out and then press the new ones in. I'd like to use the press so we'll go talk to my buddy and if he's at home we'll use this press and have some fun and hopefully he'll let us film in his shop. He's always got some cool projects. He does restorations on old hot rods and stuff like that, so really fun. Let's drop this drive shaft. Didn't anticipate having to pull these bolts back out <laughs> three days after I put them in. I still have that strong vibration. It was kind of a mystery to me. I got under here and I started shaking stuff around. It didn't even look bad when I had the drive shaft out, but got in here and shook some stuff around and found my problem. Frustrating. A lot of projects are frustrating. Really good thing is I cleaned my shop, so the floor is not absolutely disgusting. That makes things kind of handy. Now, I already have my marks on my drive shaft, so I know which way it goes back in. All right, that's two of the four bolts. I don't want the drive shaft to fall off on my head. So we're just gonna barely crack one of these guys. And that way our drive shaft doesn't fall off on our head. Now to these four bolts, which should be fairly easy because it just came off. So no lube, no PB blaster needed. Anytime you're working like this, Underneath a truck or a vehicle, probably a smart thing to do would be wearing some safety glasses. Even if they're just clear safety glasses, might be a good idea to keep metal particles out of your eyes. I'm going to need a tetanus shut after this. Mr. Exhaust system is a bit rusty. Now guys, again, I'm not a master mechanic. I'm a dude in his backyard. so. I have no formal mechanic education, but if you guys have any suggestions, please post them in the comments down there and I'll be glad to listen to them. And you may help some of the other viewers. But if you want to be a nice know-it-all condescending jerk, go ahead and do that too. And I'll delete your comment. It'll be awesome. <laughs> cool. 
so here we are we've got the drive shaft out and the u-joint that's bad is this guy right here but we're going to go ahead and replace one two three u-joints here okay so it's a two-piece drive shaft we got three u-joints on it and that's what we're going to replace so right here is the u-joint that's gone bad and you can see that the cup is basically separated right here now this one is a little on the tight side but it's okay i still got good free spinning here um, we're going to replace it anyway just to make sure and this is the end that's connected to the rear end and this is the center and this is the end that's connected to the front end and that's your shaft your splined shaft that goes into your transmission you have to be real careful with this so you don't break the seal so your transmission fluid doesn't leak all the tranny fluid out now when you do pull this you might get probably four ounces of transmission fluid run out of the transmission out of the rear of the transmission right here and a little bit will drip out right here there's a retaining ring on each side we'll remove those all the retaining rings all the way around and then we'll press out the old bearing and press in the new bearing but there's a certain procedure that we have to follow so at this point we're going to holler at my buddy it has a body shop see if he'll let us come use his press and start working on these bearings so guys what we're doing here is we're just taking a hammer and we're lightly tapping with a socket that's appropriately sized to tap this u-joint out and you don't want to hit any of the casing around the outside of the u-joint you just want to tap it till it gets loose and we're going to pull the center u-joint and we'll give you a little bit more detail as we work on the ends but right now we're just going to get the center one loose all right, so we got our first cap loose and it just basically slid out, pretty simple. So this is the bad, this is the bad part. I can't even move it with my hand, so that was my vibration. And we'll go on and put this on the vise. Okay, so we've got it in the vise and we'll show you we're just gonna knock this one out. This one could be a challenge because it's been hot and it's stuck. So keep your fingers crossed. So first we're gonna tap right here until it gets down flush. Moved. Yeah. Now we're going to go ahead and knock it through. Out. Mm -hmm. I want to flip it and try to... Let me hit it one more time. Now again, I'll tell you I'm no master mechanic, but we are getting this job done here. Just going to knock these out. We may use the press and then again, we may not use the press. This is kind of the old school way of getting it done. We'll show you how we install the new bearings once we get this old one out. But the principle is take a socket and an impact socket's best, but we have a standard socket that was just kind of a trasher and go down in the hole and knock it down through and knock each one loose. And then we'll show you how to reinstall the other one. So let's get busy beating and banging. That's good. Uh -huh. That's it. It's on the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Damn, it ain't wiggling. <laughs> Sucker's on there, buddy. Vice it. It's moving. Yeah, yeah. you got it moving now. Let me tap up on it a little bit. Wedge up on it. Wedge up on there a little bit. There it goes. Sucky! She sucked right out of there. There it is. Look at the dust come out of that. <laughs> Guys, look at the dust. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's dust coming out of that thing. And there's all the needle bearings. Check it out. That's what the problem was. That was our shimmy right there. Look at that. Yeah, it's just pieces powdered needle bearings rad all right so we got to remove the retaining pin there's a retaining pin on each one of these okay a little retaining clip and these get rusted in place so hopefully they start trying to come loose if they don't we might have to do a little work on it buddy randy here is holding the drive shaft for me this is just a pair of needle nose pliers quite pinched so what we'll do, since we can't get it from the pinch, is we'll try and tap it out. And that popped it loose on that side. Whoop. And that popped it loose on that side. You still want to punch it. There we go. That popped it loose. Light tap. Manual manipulator again. 
Don't worry about that finger. All right, that's one side loose. That's the other side loose. There we go. Done. Get yourself a mines hammer. I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Twist this guy off the end here. All right. What we're taking off when we're beating and banging is this little cup. And the cup is on each end of this star. I guess it's a cross-shaped U-joint. So if you've never done this before, if you haven't seen this before, inside here are little bearings and they're just little sticks of steel, basically, hardened steel. Daddy said, don't be bad. That's got it. Ooh, that's smooth. That like baby, like butter. So here's your U-joint, okay? And you can see how this one is dry and a little bit rusty, and it has oil all through here. Our new U-joints that we have have a grease fitting right here, and that way you can keep them greased every time you service the vehicle. It's got some grease in there, but you can tell it's gotten hot. It's a good thing. While we got the drive shaft out, we're just gonna do all three. It's a smart thing to do. And the even smarter thing to do would have been to do it the first time I had the drive shaft out. <laughs> Tap that little snap ring out. And loosen them up just like that. Really appreciate my buddy helping me out here too. There we go. Okay, got another one on the other side. If we're lucky, it'll just pop out. We ain't so lucky. So if you're doing this job on your own, you need to be prepared to do all this stuff. Yep. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. <laughs> snappy poo. Yep. Let's see if we can get this thing out. Surgeon's assistant. This is why you wear safety glasses. Thing popped me in the eyeball a little bit. I got two of them though, so I'm all right. Okay. Woohoo! Look at that. Let's tap that right there. Look at that. Little piece of heaven right there. So what we're gonna do is tap right here, and this is our socket old crusty socket and it slides right in the little slot right there get a pretty big heavy hammer and don't hit randy in the face yeah, you hit it a few times and, and you'll feel it bottom out try that yep so it'll knock it down flush on the other side so we're lining up this guy in our vise so that this piece drops out should be pretty Pretty cool. This one's sliding nice and easy. So if you watch, a little more. All right. Now we've got this section out. We're just going to grab it with some vice grips, and if we're lucky, it'll pop right out. And we're almost lucky. Tap. Yeah. Cool. Next step, we take a punch, drop in here, and we're gonna hammer this piece down through the bottom. All right, we're gonna drop it in here again, hammer, and we're gonna knock this guy out of the bottom. Yeah. Woohoo! So I could just drop right out of there. It is hot and humid. It is rough. It is hot. We're going to get this done, but we're going to set the camera down for now. Now you know how to take one out. All right? Bad of the bone, baby. <laughs> Randy's earning himself a Stony Ridge Farmer t-shirt today. Rad. All right, so what we're doing right now is we're going to remove, we removed three of these cups, and we're going to remove one cup here, and we're going to insert it into this end, basically. Take this. U joint, insert it in, then take your cup and insert it as straight as you possibly can. 
and then slide this guy down in there. And you want to make sure, don't lose any of those little needle bearings, because if you do, you're going to be pulling this thing out and doing it again. All right, so we've got a little leather strap here, and we're just going to lay it right on top of the U-joint and get it in. Let me get you a close-up. We're just going to lightly tap. This is normally what you'd be using your press for. The reason we're not using the press, because we don't want to accidentally crush the mounting setup right here. Start feeling it go through like butter and then it goes flush. And we'll get another cap and we'll slip this cap on very gently. Make sure those needle bearings stay in place. Smooth as silk. We'll lightly tap. Smooth as silk. Now we'll take our socket and we'll just tap it lightly in until we can put our retaining ring in place. So it's sitting in there. We need to pop it one more time. Just ever so lightly. There we go. Seat it in nice. Flip it back over. Get your socket. Tap him back down again. Ever so gently. Next snap ring. Lay it in place. Get your needle nose. And that, pop that snap ring in place. And it looks good. Nice. The reason we're not using the press is because you can crush this little area right here and bend this guy with the press. So we're just gonna do it gently, manually, and we need to make sure, get yourself a Sharpie or something like that, and write which end is which. Which end that your yoke was attached to and which end was attached to the rear end. And if you got a two-part drive shaft like we have, you need to make sure that you label it correctly. Whatever you do, don't hit it with the peen end of the ball peen hammer, the rounded end of the ball peen hammer, because you can scar it and cause big time problems. What happens, we were talking about rush, and that's what happens when you start talking about rush when you're working on something, weird stuff happens. Ghosts and stuff get in your machines. Goblins and raindrops and beavers. I thought pulling the drive shaft was a pain in the butt. That's the easy part. Woo, buddy. I got the tip of that finger with that one right there. Did it? <laughs> just nipped it. Just nip him. Just a little nipper. Randy is really nice to let us use his shop. Really nice that <laughs> we'll see you back at the house we're going to finish this up all right so we're back home we're going to go ahead and put this drive shaft back in we're going to take the truck for a drive and say a prayer that this fixes the vibration problem i was having it'll be nice to have this truck to use again it's been sitting ever since probably march really i haven't driven it maybe more than 10 miles since march because of this vibration issue and you know i procrastinated it's one of those deals where you got other things that are important. I got other vehicles I can get around, but I need to use my diesel. You let that diesel sit and it goes downhill. So I need to be using it. So let's check it out. Let's see if we can get this drive shaft in. We'll take it for a drive. So I'll give you a little bit of review. It snowed in March. After it snowed, I drove to work with four-wheel drive engaged for about a hundred miles basically now after that it started vibrating very strongly we replaced the rear support carrier bearing and it didn't fix the problem it was better but it didn't fix it so today we pulled the drive shaft the rear drive shaft it's a two-piece drive shaft and we put three new U joints in it, three new universal joints, and they're Duralast universal joints, and they're greasable. So the original U joints were not greasable. Pulling out of my driveway here, the original U joints were not greasable. These are greasable. They sold me on it, so hopefully it doesn't sling grease all up underneath my truck. It's a beautiful, clean 2000 model Cummins diesel with 130,000 miles on it, and this is my unicorn. So let's see how she does. Uh, nervous. It's like my first date. We live on a dirt road, driving out the dirt road here. If this solves the problem, I'm going through McDonald's drive-thru and I'm getting myself a big old juicy milkshake. It's been a long day working on this thing. All right, 
Moment of truth. No vibration. Smooth. We're gonna give it a minute. I'm gonna drive for a minute and put the camera down. <laughs> Problem solved, guys. Thanks a lot for watching the vlog today. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to pound that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Click the little bell down there. It'll notify you when I post a new video. We got our Cummins back. It's so nice. Now I can drive my baby again. Thanks a lot, guys. We sure went through some struggles on this strange vibration in this truck. Turns out it was just a U-joint. Just one U-joint. But I replaced them all. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on Stony Ridge Farmer. All right. Woo! <laughs> Got my truck back, man. You know, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Did it? Yeah, <laughs> just nipped it. Just nip him. Just a little nipper.